for tomorrow. So I apologize in advance for being disjointed and I want to give a great deal of thanks to my staff who have been scrambling for the last hour uh, to finish the assignments that I have given them until tomorrow uh, to complete. Um, I want to acknowledge that this is not an easy conversation. There are no easy answers because the cost of hers is real. This is a very real challenge for our cities, our counties, our school districts, all of our public employers, every single one or only. This is a debt that we have all incurred, and it is a debt that has provided benefits that we all share. This is compensation for work that has been done for us by firefighters, by police officers, by teachers and child welfare workers. Uh, by the people that process our taxes, by uh, the people that, that serve us um, in this capital by providing us with information and research, by the people that clean this building, by the people that clean the bathrooms in college dorms. All of us have benefited from that. I know that every single person on this floor values that work, honors that work, and respects the people that do that. And I appreciate um, the motivation and the hard work that has gone into this um, and want to declare that, that my no vote and the things that I am about to say are not intending to characterize the motivations of, of any other people. I am just explaining why I have the position and taking the position that, that I have. So first I have to deny that the, the problem is big. It is big and it is real. But it is shared by all of us, every single one of us. Every single one of us should help to pay that debt. We should not put that debt on the shoulders of a small group of people. Now, I know that is not a popular thing to say, to say, well, why don't we do a 1% payroll tax for a period of time? Why don't we do a property tax charge? Why don't we do something that equally spreads that burden across every single of our own? Instead, we are saying that public employees will be okay because we will redirect 2.5% of their monthly pay to pay this debt. And that over time, their salary, their um, retirement income will be cut by about half percent. That's a much easier thing to do for people that don't have a vote than to all of us to stand up and say that we want to make this choice between reduced services because of the cost of this first um, deficit that we have or that we step up and take revenue action to be able to pay the debt that every single one of us incur for the services that we all have received. So I would um, really like to see us attack this issue in a way that is fair. I would love to see us move on to the kicker and put $1.4 billion towards that unfunded liability. That is real payment right now. But instead, we put this on those workers that are there. There are three reasons, four reasons really, why I'm voting no on the bill. The first is that one of the reasons that we're here is that our predecessors kicked the can down the road. They made decisions that were politically and economically beneficial for them at the time, hoping that someone later, that would be us, would address the problem, would take these things along. Three quarters of the savings in this are the refinancing of our, of our debt. We are pushing this cost off to future legislators, legislatures, to other Oregonians, hoping that at some point in the future, we will come back and find something that is politically feasible. That doesn't make sense to me because that is how we got to this place right now. The second, and I wish that we had had time to better understand this, the, the addition of um, the sports betting. Now, I appreciate that it meets the principle of not just public employees, other people adding in, but taking people who are highly at risk to become addicted to gambling and using lottery, which we frequently talk about here, that we are addicted to lottery and are we disproportionately taking advantage of economically disadvantaged people in the state by paying for social services with lottery. Now we're pouring that into, into PERS, and that, that makes me uncomfortable based on the other discussions that we've had. We even have a bill out there um, that would stop sports bets from expanding our lottery. And again, to be clear, I am not opposed to gambling. You all know I grew up in Las Vegas, and that's 
that's my, my history, but there's a very big difference between destination gambling that wealthy people with incomes do on a budget and the lottery that preys on the low income people. Finally, it's this issue of fairness. And I want to talk about what that means, that, that 1%. There are thousands of board members who will be impacted by this, whose final average salary will be $40,000 or less. If that is the case, their full formula calculation, their monthly pension benefit, after working 30 years, will be about $1,500 a month. Hopefully, it's even supplemented somewhat by their IAP, which under this plan will be reduced somewhere between 7 and 12.5%. And at $1,500 a month, these are the people that do cleaning. These are the people that support our students in our classroom, our education assistants. These are our child welfare workers. These are our food service workers. They will have $1,500 a month. In my community, where many of these people live, a two-bedroom apartment <coughs> is $1,217 a month. These people don't have 7 to 12.5%. These people don't have a percent to shave off. Barbara is a child welfare worker in Medford. Already, her wages are so low that to survive, she has to work to the age of 77. If this measure passes, she does not have that percentage. She wants to work into her 80s after working to support our children who are at risk, and that's a problem. Finally, colleagues, I believe strongly in promises. In the 2013 session, we passed legislation. It was one of the hardest votes I ever took. I voted for, Senate, for House Bill, Senate Bill 832, I believe was the number. It was really hard. I was one of the last people to be gotten on that bill. And I was told at that time I would never have to take another first vote again. I was told this was better than the other alternatives. It was essential. It was an emergency. I had to do it. It was the most responsible thing that I could do. And I felt sick, but I didn't. My community was incredibly unhappy about that. I was attacked about it in that campaign, um, as the good senator just mentioned. And um, a good friend of mine, a former colleague of many of yours, Senator Cliff Tro, wrote a letter for me that got mailed to PERS members in my community. Personal letter to all of those people saying he knew that people were concerned about my vote on Senate Bill 832, but that I had promised him I would not do that again and that he trusted me, that people should vote for me because he trusted that I would keep my promise. So today, it's about my promise to my community. It's about my promise to my former, um, to my former chief senator, Senator Tro, who put his own integrity on the line to vouch for my own with that promise that I would keep those promises. And it's the keeping of a promise to those who have stood up, taken jobs, taken pay cuts, taken cut school days in order to do this work because they knew that they would be okay in retirement. Those promises are important to me. We should all share the news. I want to close with a story about John, and I'm, um, it's ironic to me that today we're honoring firefighters, but uh, John's a firefighter, and he says, you know when you go to parades in your hometown in uniform, it's great because all kids flock to you. They all want to be firefighters when they grow up. And they should, because it's a great career where you get to help a lot of people. But what kind of message does it send to future firefighters if the commitments that are made to us can just change on a whim? Colleagues, I can't break my commitment. This is not the right proposal. The problem is real, but this is not a fair solution. It's not a real solution. I appreciate those that have worked so hard on this, but let's go back to work and come up with a solution that we all share. Thank you, Mr. President.